<laughs> oh, the dust on these two. Oh, what a shame. They are. They need some TLC. <laughs> Not been used for a while. So, um, 35 mil camera, medium format camera. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about how I develop my black and white film at home. And as you can see, we can do it in a nice bright room like this. So it's really, really easy. Um, if you've never tried it, I really recommend you do it. It's really, really addictive. And the end result when you see your negatives, when you take them out of the developing tank, is is uh, yeah, it's really something. So if you've never if you've never developed your own film, definitely give it a go. It's really good, really good fun. Um, but yeah. The, the process between 35 mil and medium format is pretty much the same. It's just that the, the negatives are slightly different on the medium format, but the process is, is, is pretty much the same. So we'll talk about that and the differences now. So uh, yeah, I've got everything over there set up, ready, um, everything we're gonna need. So we'll jump over there and uh, see how we get on. Right then, so what we're going to need, it looks like a lot, it looks chaotic, <laughs> it's not, it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but obviously you're going to need a film, <laughs> sounds obvious I know, but what, I mean I use Ilford HP5 as a, sort of my go-to film and it's good to have a go-to film so you get used to sort of the results and how to develop it and what you can achieve with the film. So Ilford HP5 is a fantastic film, really, really um, recommend that. Um, but today, for the purpose of the video, we're going to use this um, Lomography, Lomog, Lomo, yeah, Lomography, I think it's called. Um, just, just there's no photographs on it, but I can show you how I can develop this film. Okay, because uh, obviously I can do that externally, but we'd we'd do it in this bag. Now this is a medium format negative, as you can see, the 120 roll is bigger. Um, but when we take this off inside the developing bag, you've just got to separate the paper off the back of it and you end up with pretty much the same thing here anyway. So it's, it's, they, they look different, but when, when you take it, everything apart and this apart inside the bag, they, they pretty much are the same thing. But we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. So next thing you're going to need, um, obviously is chemicals. Let's put them to the side. So you've got... I, I chose the Ilford range because I didn't really know what I was buying because when I was I did, last time I bought well we didn't really buy them we got them given to us at college so I trusted the Ilford brand so I, I got this set off Amazon everything I've got here off Amazon I'll put a link to in the description if you want to pick it all up Ilford Soul 3 I believe is a new developer but it's actually been really really good um, I don't really know much about developers but I know that certain developers will give you a different response to your film so it's worth giving them um, giving these some research and looking into them. So that's the Alpha Soul 3. So that develops the negatives. That's what makes your images appear on the negative. The Alpha Stop is, is the stop bath. Uh, that will basically end the process. So once you've finished developing, this is gonna put an end to it. Make sure it's not gonna to continue to develop. We should make your negative get lighter and lighter and lighter. So that's the stop pr uh, process there. And then the fixer, um, I believe it's just a, it's an ultimate end and um, stops the negatives fading and stuff like that. So it makes it more permanent and I think. Um, but yeah, so you need all three of them. Okay, so those are the chemicals you absolutely need. Um, also got here, uh, Ilfatol, which is a wetting agent. This is basically when the negatives are done and we're gonna dry them, you put a very, I mean, the size of the bottle, you wouldn't believe it, but <laughs> you put a very, very small amount in the the final rinse with this and it just basically make, makes all the water just run off the negatives. And when you dry the negatives, then it means you haven't got any runs or drip marks or anything like that, which you can't get rid of. Um, well, you'll scratch the negatives trying anyway. So next we've got these bottles here. Now, these are fantastic. They come obviously empty and you put your own mixtures in there. The developer one will stay empty because you, the developer is a one, uh, one use um, chemical. So once you've used this, you, you then bin it. So that will always be empty. Um, the stop though and the fix, you can actually mix and, and use them over and over again. I've used these about six or eight times and they're still working fine, um, I believe. Um, now what I should do is write a date or a number of the amount of times I use this, each one of these chemicals underneath there, and then I'll know when to change it. But otherwise, um, yeah, so the stop and the fix, you don't don't have to bin them every time. Um, and I'll have to find out how you actually are supposed to bin chemicals, because I believe you can't just pour them down the sink. Um, but um, there might, might be a case of putting them in a big bottle and taking them to your local tip or something like that, I don't know. Um, I've, not, I've not done that yet. So yeah, the stop and the fix. 
but yeah, then these were these are brown bottles for, to stop the um, stop the light getting into them. So once you put your chemicals in, they're they're obviously safe from sunlight and stuff like that. So yeah, they're really really good. They are. Um, they're cheap off off probably eBay or something like that. Next, you've got these measuring jugs. These are obviously very very good just because you've got one for your stop, one for your fix, and then a little one for the developer. And it's nice to have one for each so that when, um, because they do smell a bit and you don't want to be washing stuff during your process. So it's good to have um, one one of each. But yeah, you, you can probably get away with like a Pyrex dish or whatever you've got in the house for them, but they are really, really handy. And I say they're not that expensive anyway. So next thing is your developing tank. These are fantastic. This is called a Patterson tank. Um, I don't know if there's any other brands of it, but this is a Patterson tank. I think this is the standard size. Uh, they're absolutely brilliant. Now, when I was in college, I don't remember these being around, but this is what you get inside anyway. So this is the agitator that will stir what's in there. Uh, then they've got this funnel on top, which clicks on, and that acts as part of the light proofing. And that's where you pour your chemicals through that. And then inside here, you've got, um, obviously all this is light proof. Uh, you've got these spools which you, you take these apart, look. You have the holder at the bottom of the, the tank there like that for the spools to go onto. And you've got these two spools, which you have, if you see there, you've got these two lead marks where you, where you put your film into there. What I've done is I've actually, on one of them, I've actually etched, I've got a knife and scratched the sides because I found it easier to find them like that. in Because you're doing all this in the dark bag. You're doing this all in the dark. So I've put marks on the side of there just so I can find, because obviously you can use that, you can find them like that, but there's also one around this side, which I found a bit distracting when it's in the dark as well. So when you when you get these, just put a little mark on the end of there. But what you can do for the, th obviously that's set for 35 mil, so the 35 meg negative will go in there, but you can dislocate them and they come apart. And then he says relatively easily, there you go, lock it back into place, and then that's for your medium format for the 120 film. So, um, yeah, so they're really, really good. But when you get them, you get them set up obviously for two, uh, two 35 mils or one medium format. But what we're going to do today is we're obviously going to develop a, a 35 mil negative. But although you only need to put one in there, I actually recommend you put the, the both of them in there because it stops when that's in there. It's with the film on it, it stops that one rattling around inside the tank. I don't think it will, but it just means that your liquid is gonna stay covered and this is gonna keep it held down. So when you've got your film wrapped around there in the tank, it means that it's definitely gonna have the chemicals over it all, at all times. So yeah, they're really, they are really, really good, these things. And they say these come in different sizes so you can develop lots of films at one, at one time if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, keep it simple though. What else have we got? Oh, so let's put that back in there so yeah very very handy things they are okay that goes on there that goes on the top and where's the agitator gone and then that one that goes on the top that makes it so you can spin it round and whatnot that's completely light so even without the lid that is light proof now it's really really cool very clever um, next thing I don't know if I mentioned but thermostat uh, thermometer so these are really really important if you want consistency in your developing so if every time you're going to go out and you're going to meet your film the same way um, and you want to make sure that the images are going to come out looking exactly the same sort of exposure wise it's it's really quite important I believe I've always tried to get it right this room is consistently between about 19 and 21 degrees anyway because I've got the underfloor heating system in here so this room is always quite warm um, but uh, the, as I as I believe you need to keep your chemicals around about 20 degrees so when you're mixing them when you're mixing your chemicals in there you need to use the thermometer uh, to make sure that the, the whatever temperature you use you write down in your notebook and you know that that temperature is going to be the same every time um, because obviously you don't want a variance in, in exposures and in developing um, results. So that's really, really handy for that. So I must admit between 19 and 21, I've not really noticed any difference. I've always got the results I wanted to. So I've been all right with that. Um, next thing we've got, I haven't mentioned it, but it's really, really good idea to have a notebook. So then you can write down your um, recipes for, say if you were shooting at um, 35 mil at ISO 400, or you were shooting a 35 mil at pushed one stop or pushed two stops. You've got the mixture and everything down here. 
So um, you, it will tell you what the um, what the mixtures are for um, box speed ISO 400, which for that developer is one plus 14. And then, you know, for one stop, it's one plus nine. And for two stops, it's one plus nine. So things like that, it's really, really good to have. Now this will all make sense when you start doing it, uh, the one plus nine. Um, it's really, 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 really handy. Okay, so the next thing I recommend is this app. Um, and I've got it on the iPad, Massive Dev Chart, it's called. Um, it's really, really handy. And what you can do is pretty much like having your notepad, but all pre-programmed in an app. So um, you, you, it's a free app. I think it's on Android as well, but you download it and you tell it what, um, what film and what um, developer you're using and how, how you shot the film. So if you shot it at, so we'll go back here, like for this film here, we've shot this Ilford HP5 at 1600, which is two stops. If I go down to there, I've got Ilford HP5, and then it says Ilford Soul 3, which is the developer, um, at ISO 1600. So if we press that, it goes straight in, tells me what my mixture is going to be and how to mix it, and it tells me how long to develop it and at what temperature. Um, and obviously, you can add notes and stuff there at the bottom as well. And then you just press start, and it tells you everything you need to do. So yeah, can't recommend that enough. It's a really, really. I think I believe it's free. I don't remember paying for it, but yeah, it's really, really good. Massive dev chart. That's called. Can't recommend that enough. Uh, what else are we going to need? This is your dark bag. Uh, obviously, this will act as your dark room. So every, everything you're going to need for your uh, developing process, so your film, your tank, um, you're going to need a pair of scissors, and everything you're going to need goes into this bag. Now, it's dead important you don't forget the scissors. I did that once, and I, I put the film on the reel, and I couldn't cut the end of the reel. <laughs> so I thought I was going to end up losing all my photographs. So yeah, remember the scissors. Try and get scissors that aren't going to kill you, <laughs> because if you're in here, if you, if you can't see what you're doing, and these are really, really sharp, um, yeah, you, you basically, you could pretend up stabbing yourself in the hand or something. So yeah, so make sure they're not too sharp on the ends. But yeah, the, everything goes basically in that. Um, and then what you do is you put your hands in here and it light seals it. And then you can you can do everything through, through um, with the lights on, obviously you don't have to turn the lights off, but you once you've got everything in there and you seal the end of that, it's, uh, it's job done, it's job done. Right then. Okay, so what else are we gonna need? Um, I use this cloth basically because when you've got the chemicals on, on here afterwards and you're agitating it around, the, these can leak a little bit, especially after you've swapped from developer to stop, these can leak a little bit. So it's good just to have um, a cloth at the top of it just to keep, keep everything clean. Also, when you're mixing everything, it tends to get a bit messy around here anyway. So it's a good idea to do this in the kitchen. You're gonna need a sink as well. Oh yeah, there's my sink. <laughs> just in case. So if, if my chemicals weren't warm enough, I can put some boiling hot water in this and then I can sit that in there, or hot water or whatever, and just wait for the temperature, give it a minute to wait for the temperature to rise and then I know um, the, 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 the back up. But I, I've just checked the thermostat and this room is where it should be anyway. So I'll check the um, the mix, but it should be around, around about rise anyway. Next thing, squeegee. Um, this is basically, so when you've got your film afterwards and you're hanging it up, I've got one here actually, which I'm gonna, for the second part of the video, I was going to show you. So when the, when your your film is hanging up, you use the squeegee just to pull all the water off off the negatives, um, and then they're really really good. These are and it, there is a sponge version as well, but these are the Patterson version. They do they do the job fine. Um, next is a film retriever. This is amazing, and the amount of times you I've overwhelmed a film, and then so the the, the lead the tail bit the lead bit there goes inside. And some people crack open the top of these. You can get a little can opener, it'll open the top of them. But I've got this thing and it just literally just goes inside there. Um, there isn't, this is just an empty canister. It'll just go inside there and it, you'll just pull that out and it just pulls the film back out. It's absolutely brilliant, but make sure you keep the instructions because I forget how to use it every time. But it is really, really good, really good, so yeah. And separate video, but these are really cool. These are digitalizers. Digit digitalizer, yeah, that's what they're called. Digitalizers by Luomo again, same people who made this film. Uh, so there's a, I'll put a link to their website. So these are scanning masks, basically. So you put your film in there, you lift that plastic up, you put the film in, you basically put your film in there, underneath that, lift the plastic up, the metal thing will fall out and you end up with 
with the negative perfectly squished in there for scanning or for photographing. So yeah, these are really, really good. Tad expensive, but they are very good. I think they are worth it. But yeah, I think they're about 40 quid each, but they are good. Next thing you're going to need is extension tubes. These are dead cheap. I think I paid about uh, 20 quid for the set sort of thing, 10 pounds for the set. I don't know, they're, they're, they're bits of plastic, aren't they? Um, now, depending on the lens you use, sometimes the 10 mil adapter is better than the 16 mil. As, as I say, it, sometimes it's better on the Fuji, sometimes it's better on the Sony. I've got them for both. Um, and I can't work out which is the best combination, to be honest, because it depends on which lens I'm using, if I'm using a prime or if I'm using a zoom. So yeah, definitely get both a 10 mil and a 16 mil, but they're dead, dead cheap. And another thing to keep handy is just a bowl. Just a bowl, if you're gonna spill anything, you've got it all handy. If you haven't got the sink nearby, my sink's in there. So yeah, it's just handy to keep the bowl. Okay, let's get started. That's, uh, let's get cracking, otherwise this would be a really long video. Okay, so what we need to end up with, we need to end up with the negatives hanging up like this okay so the other thing you're going to need which I didn't mention are these hooks these are patterson sort of negative hooks they just pin on the bottom um, obviously can't use them because i'm using i've only got one set and i'm using them there okay so that's what we need to end up with um and i say that'll be a separate video when we when we make that so um let's get cracking Right then, let's put everything in the bag and the way it would be inside the bag, but obviously we're doing it on top of the bag just so you can see for the benefit of the camera. But I always put my tank in the top right, um, scissors will come down here. The film, if it can't go on the spool already, will go there. And then you empty the, uh, obviously like, like the medium format. The medium format can't go on the spool in advance, but the 35 mil one can. Um, what happens is when you peel the medium, when you put them in, in the bag, you can peel, you have to peel the medium format film off and there's a piece of paper on both sides of the film. So you need to separate them inside the bag and then start loading the, the spool. Okay, so you could, it's, slightly, it's slightly different like that until, Basically, you need to get the medium format, so it's just a so it's just a negative like that, basically. So it's um, it, it, it ends up being the same position, same principle once you've taken the paper off the back of that. But it's a bit first, bit more, bit more fiddly. Okay. Um, so what we need to do is we need to take this apart. So you hear that click off um, the agitator. You don't need the lid in the bag because it light seals with that alone. So you don't need the lid in the bag. So we'll take these out, the spools. And then you need the spool holder to go at the bottom. Very important you've got that, because if you haven't got that, it ruins the whole thing. It's not light proof. Uh, find the one that's got your etches on, which is that one. So all I did was got a pair of scissors or a knife and just made etches on the side of it, find it easier. The one that's, um, that's going on the top, leave there, put that on the top of there. And uh, the agitator doesn't need to go in the bag at this point either, so we can leave that out. Okay, so we've got everything we need. I say we're not doing the medium format because there's some photographs on that I really need. <laughs> so I can't waste that film, but um, we'll waste this film. Okay, so basically this would all be done in the bag and we wouldn't see a thing. We'd put it all in that top section there and seal it all up so we wouldn't have any light. And then our arms go in this bottom bit then and we can, we can do it in the dark. So that's completely light proof bag. Um, and then yeah, we can add the chemicals then. So the idea is that you get this negative on this spool. So let's find, we'll be, it's a good idea to practice doing this like as if you're doing it in the dark. So you could close your eyes if you wanted to or whatever, like turn the lights off or something. Uh, but yeah, that's why I've put the notches on there so I can find them or you can just use your fingers like that. Um, so we've got the notches, got them lined up and then you need to f put your fingers there and feed the film through here. Now what you can do is I cheat here. I actually do this bit in daylight because I find that there's enough there's enough film just to pull on in in light with we've been we've been able to see pull the film on. This is a bit fiddly. As long as you get it past them bearings you could then put that film inside the the bag like that. So the film would go in there and I put my hands in there and all I've got to do then is pull this, the rest of the film out. So now obviously if there was photographs on this part of the film, they'd be absolutely ruined. But what we're gonna do is we pull that on there and then we just twist it. And we'll do, we're obviously doing this inside the bag so it's completely dark. And then we just twist in this. And you can pull a couple of inches off and just twist the negatives going around like that. So we can see but what's happening is it's just taking on, it's just wrapping, this, wrapping the negatives around 
the spool. Okay, so I'll just put the rest of the film on here. So obviously there are no photographs on here, but if there were, they would be ruined right now. So all we're doing is twist, we're just twisting the spool until all the negatives are on. So this is a, the same principle with the medium format. It's just that you'd have all the, you wouldn't have it in a cartridge now, you'd have everything here, but you'd also have a load of paper separate that you'd have to try and keep keep away from the from the reel as well. So it's it's a bit more fiddly, but the process is, is, is pretty much the same. So once you've done 35 mil a few times, medium format, once you know what's in the medium format um, spool, it's pretty much easy. So we just, we just chuck them on there quick. These are going on really nicely. Sometimes they do kink, I must admit, but these are going on really nicely. So just keep pulling that all the way through. And I have done this once and forgot the scissors weren't in the bag. And I had to, well, I don't remember how I got out of it because <laughs> I couldn't cut the end of the, the spool off the, off the film. Is that the end of it? That might be the end of it. Oh, it's kinked there a little bit because I wasn't concentrating. So you just keep pulling it until it gets to the end. So there we know it's at the end. So just wrap it right up there. And then what we do is we'd feel, obviously doing this in the dark, grab our scissors because we know they're there. We'll get the end of the, pull, make sure we've pulled the end of the, the roll as, as far as we can and then just snip the end of that off. Okay, so that's then separate and we can just continue to wind that on until it's completely on the spool. So that then we need to reach over here because we know where we've put this here. We know where everything is, we lift that lid off and this one with the, with the film goes at the bottom of the tank. So push him to the bottom of the tank and then our spare spool goes over the top of that. That's just to keep it down so it's not wiggling around. Then we put our funnel lock lid on top of that. When that clicks there like that, we know that's light proof. So that's not, that is completely light proof now. So irrespective of the fact that we've done it in daylight and they're ruined anyway, <laughs> the, these photographs, if we did this in the bag, we could now open the bag. We can take this out of the bag and it's completely fine. So at this point, all we need to do is put the agitator in the top, which will enable us to rotate the, the spools and we need to get the lid ready. Okay, that's that part done. So at this stage, then we would get rid of the dark bag. Okay, so we need to mix the developer now. So as I said before, the developer is a one-time one use, okay? Um, so that's the Alphasol, the stop and the fix we've got ready. But when you do this, you need to have all your chemicals ready, all right? So we know that's a 35 mil, um, we know it's a 35 mil negative that's in there. So let's just open the app back up. And it's saying one plus, uh, we're gonna develop it as if we're gonna develop a Hilford HP5 at 400 or something like that, because it's, this is, the, this is, I've not got that film entered in here because it's not a film I'm gonna use. So we'll just, use, we'll just develop it as if it's Hilford HP5. Uh, we're not, we know that the films aren't good, the photographs aren't going to, there's no photographs on there anyway, so it doesn't matter. But we'll just go Ilford HP5, ISO 400, and that's saying 1 plus 14 there. So 1 plus 14 for two for a total of 290 mil, 1 plus 14 is 19.3 uh, 19 of developer and 270.1 of water. Okay, so we'll put 19, we'll put 19 and a half in here of developer. You keep the thing flat so you get a more accurate. So just basically under 20. That's that. And we need 270 mil of water. Let's grab that. Okay, there's our 270 mil. So we pour the developer into there. Okay. Developer can be messy, so it's worth keeping that separate. So if you get developer on anything, it can be messy. So this is where we'd use our thermometer just to check the temperature of that, straight out of the tap. So the tap's not gonna be the right temperature, is it? But that's saying 19 point, that's saying 19, so I'm happy with that. I did put a tiny bit of warm water in there as well. So that's 19 degrees, fantastic. So what we can do now is we can pour, we could pour that straight into there, 
we could pour this straight into here now, but what I'm going to do for the, for the sake of the video, I'm going to pour it into this developer storage jar, bottle, whatever you want to call it. Um, because at this point, we, if we needed to, we could mix the fix and the stop, okay? But we got them ready, so at this point now we can go straight into here. So let's go back here, and it's telling us it's going to take 11 minutes, all right? 11 minutes of this. So as soon as I press pour this in there, I press start, and it will do the rest itself, okay? So we go pour that in there. Okay. So press start, and what we can do now is just turn this for a couple of seconds on the top, just using the little agitator stick, give that a couple of seconds, put our lid on, and you see now on the app, it's actually showing us a little symbol now telling us to, we should be rotating the tub. So we'll get that on that, put that on, and then we'll just turn it around. So this is where the second spool is handy now because we know it's not going to be sliding around. So all you do, give it a minute, just rotating it like this. And then at the end of the minute, we give it a tap just to stop all the bubbles from sitting on the negatives. Because if you don't do that, the bubbles will mark the negatives and you can't get that out. So 10, sec 10 more seconds. Just all I'm doing is just twisting it and rocking it basically gently so so there we go it's going to tell us now to stop so tap that now what i'll mention here is we put 290 mil of developer in that tub which is enough for the 35 mil if we we're doing a medium format it's about 500 mil okay so it's use use more for medium format obviously because the negatives are bigger but what I've done to preempt this, because I do a lot of medium format and 35 mil, is I've actually mixed more stop and fix than I need to. So there's actually enough stop and fix mixture for the medium format negative. So it basically means that I can use the same mixture for both films. I haven't got a remix. I haven't got to have one for 35 mil and one for um, medium format. Okay, so that's going to take 11 minutes. We will leave that. Um, come back in 11 minutes for the next process which will be the stop bath and then we'll just get ready now because it's going to say in about 10 seconds five seconds it's going to tell me to agitate it again three two one and there's our little symbol coming up so we grab it and again this time it's only for 10 seconds so we're only going to rotate it for 10 seconds there you go and then this time we can tap it again and leave him alone see it's already i can feel it starting to leak they do leak a little bit, but yeah. Okay, see you in about nine minutes. Three, two. Job done. So there we are, we can take out the developer. A bit foamy, so pour the developer in your sink. So the color that comes off it. <laughs> it does not look very pretty. There you are. Let's pour that in there. So as soon as the, let's put the agitator back in, that's not supposed to fall out. As soon as the developer is out, you need to put your stop straight in. The stop bath is only for a minute. So you need to pour the stop straight in. Now point out um, while we're doing this, um, I'm not entirely sure whether or not it's a good idea to pour developer down the sink. So. Um, we need to find out whether or not it's basically safe to do so or to take it to your local tip and stuff like that. Mick, I, I hear people say different things, so uh, yeah, pop him on there. So he only has a minute in here, and this, should, as I said before, is literally just to stop the process of the developer. Okay, so make sure that the images that were would have been on film um, aren't, don't continue to get brighter and brighter and brighter because you've left the developer on there so as you can see we've still got constant agitation just to finish that off Now I can feel by the weight there's a lot more liquid in this than before, so uh, we know the uh, negatives are covered. 
three, two, one. That's the stop done. Now, as I said, the stop is actually reusable. So having these wide neck bottles is really handy because you can pour, let's take the agitator out. We can pour that straight back into the stop bar. There you go. Okay. Let's remember I've used that again. So put the lid back on that. Next, in straight in with a fix. And the fix is a five minute process. So put the fix in there. Again, that's 500 mil, so more than enough. Give them a bit of a turn and then press continue. And it goes straight on with the next stage. So twist that for 10 seconds. Pop the lid on. This is where it starts to get messy, especially when you've got an iPad, you need to be careful because iPads are certainly not waterproof. So, Give him a couple of seconds. And this is to stop our negatives from fading and all that. Job done. There we are. So as with the stop, we can pour the fix back into the bottle. Turn that. He's in. At this point, the negatives are actually fine. We can uh, we can take them out and have a look, but we're going to take put that lid back on that. They'll go for another day. This is where I should be making a mark that we've used that box, that, these bottles again. But what we'll do now is I'll rinse this under the tap for about for about a minute or two, uh, just with just with cold water, um, and then afterwards we'll put a couple of drops of the wetting agent in, um, just basically rinse everything out and, uh, and make it all ready for, for, for coming out and, and running the squeegee down. So let me just run this under the tap for 30 seconds. I'll be straight back. Okay. So we've got our clean negatives, just a tiny bit of, uh, I say good and so you know is why they've given us a, such a big bottle of, of this. There we are. So we'll just give that 30 seconds in there. That's all it needs. Okay. Starting to get messy. <laughs> all right, that is us done. Might have put a tad too much in there, but anyway, makes no difference. So we are empty that out of there. Drop down, brilliant. So at this point, we can now start chucking things in the sink and getting everything clean. But we're not doing that now. So let's have a look. Now at this point is where we get dead excited because we're going to see our negatives and see how everything's came out. But obviously that, <laughs> there are no photographs to look at today. But okay, so at this point I'll be pulling this out and going, wow, these are awesome. Look at this, so exciting. <laughs> I really do love this bit. It really is cool, it really is cool. So put that in our sink. Put that in our sink. And then, yeah, we just pull, gently pull these off Right now, I'd be grinning like a Cheshire cat because there'd be loads of cool photographs on here and I'd be going, yay, look at this. <laughs> but there aren't any. It's kind of upsetting, actually. So yeah, I'd be doing it a lot more gently as well <laughs> so I don't kink the thing. But yeah, let's just pull this off here. And there we go. There it is, our final negatives. Aren't they amazing? <laughs> Um, so what we do now is we'd, do, we'd use these pins, I, I've only got one set, uh, but we'd, we'd use these hooks on the top of here and leave this to dry. 
um, but obviously we don't care about this anymore so we can bin that and here's one we prepared earlier <laughs> so this is basically what you would end up with you'd end up with being able to see all your photographs on there like that and I don't this 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 roll um, has been in my cupboard about six months because I took it when I bought um, my it's one of the rolls I put through as a test roll for when I first bought this FM2 camera. So I can't actually remember um, any of the photographs on that roll. So I'm really looking forward to seeing them because they're, yeah. I think it was when I was wandering around Swansea just, uh, just, just firing off shots, just testing it. I think I shot it at ISO. They're shot at ISO 1600 so that the film, that's why it's this film. So the film has been pushed two stops. That's why I don't know if you can see that there, but it says, uh, there's a number two in the box where it says 1600 so that that tells me that it's been pushed two stops so yeah i know they're going to be a bit grainy but it's a, i've never shot a film at iso 1600 before that's what, what i think they are okay so that is it basically all you'll end up with is um these on your hooks which you need to leave to dry for 24 hours um, and what you do on i'll use the ones that we've just chucked on the floor what you'd do is you'd, you'd obviously have them hanging up on the hooks and you get your squeegee. You can, you can wet this and put it in a bit of wetting agent as well, but you just run the squeegee down, down the negative a few times. It's, it's easier to do when they're on hooks. So you run the squeegee down a few times um, and leave it to dry for 24 hours in somewhere where it's not going to get knocked. And then the wetting agent will, will, will hopefully mean that you don't have any runs or anything in the, in the, in the negative. So yeah, you can just means that you don't have any scratches or anything like that, or hopefully. Need to look after these, protect these, put them in like a plastic bag so they don't get any marks or anything on, so they don't wreck your negatives. Because if you do that and there's any marks or scratches, it will just go straight through your negative and you can't repair it. So yeah, do look after the squeegee. Brilliant, so yeah, that would be hanging up and that would be us done. As I said, these are the ones I did um, before um, and what you'd do is you'd cut them into sizes into sorry lengths so that they fit in the in here so it's like one two three four yeah six so you cut them into sixes so they fit in the uh, scanning mask and then you're good to go good to go yeah looking forward to seeing them images <laughs> but anyway that was that is pretty much it all you gotta do is tidy up um but yeah, so make notes as you go along. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. It's really addictive. It's really, really good fun. I love doing it. It's dead relaxing. Um, it's good. It's good because digital photography is, is great. But it's nice to have a, it's nice to have a bit more of a project with, it, isn't it? So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope I didn't go too fast over anything. I see the next video. I will be showing you how I scan them and uh, digitalize them basically and edit them in Lightroom. Um, but yeah, that is it. Um, but if you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button and give it a thumbs up. Drop me a comment. Let me know if there's anything I do that you do differently. I'd say I've, I've not been doing this particularly long from home, so um, I'm all ears. If you've got any any ways I can improve my process or if there's anything I've done wrong, um, by all means, let me know. But otherwise, I'll see you again soon. Take care and thanks for watching. See you guys.